Hello, everybody. It's me, the Naughty Professor, and we're having a uh, family together this time, this morning. So there's a Gita on her uh, uh, cat perch in the hall, and I saw a baby ready red. <laughs> uh, uh, the hall now back in his room, but the door is open, so that counts as family together this time. And the other one is here because I'm, I'm having breakfast. My breakfast is consisting of Cheetos, um, and it's closed with one of these uh, cat-shaped kippers, you know? So, um, you may have to go, uh, I don't know, I would prefer a black cat than a pink cat, but cat is cat. So, uh, I'm having Cheetos with uh, cheese. Uh, this is a herb cheese, and this one is slightly spicier. This is some kind of pepper in this cheese. So anyway, this is from uh, Cheese Boutique. So anyway, um... I, uh, it's very hard, still hard for me to eat, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of forcing them, and Cheetos are relatively soft, so I'm, I'm forcing those down, uh, I just took my, uh, Tylenol 3, and I'm, uh, about to take my, uh, antibiotic, and that's, that's the reason I'm eating, because with this antibiotic, it says it's very powerful, and you have to take it with food. So I'm just uh, I'm forcing down some uh, some Cheetos and kind of chewing from the left side of my mouth. Okay, one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my antibiotic and then I'll talk a bit more. Now, isn't this something? Uh, Agita up there on her perch, and one of her brothers in the very next cat condo. I mean, a little further down, so there is I think maybe two feet separation. Uh, notice how she's not acknowledging him. But she's not freaking out either. She's looking this way, but she she knows he's there, but she's not hissing, growling, jumping up and creating a big scene. So, you know, this is huge progress. And the other one has been playing and running here and running there. So anyway, uh, uh, I, I think I'll give the I'll give this one a toy to uh, her, his favorite toy to play with, so that uh, you know keep him busy. They do love that. Um, uh, that uh, dangling uh, one toy. So what I have to do is uh, I kind of stick the wand on the top tier there, and then they uh, then the big game is to pull the thing out. And they they they've mostly destroyed it, but there's one tassel still hanging. So they uh, uh, so they uh, they uh, the game is to pull it out and to try to detach it. But uh, it keeps us uh, kind of springing back. So anyway, this will keep me busy. And the other one is playing with the um, Dollarama uh, toy that the relatives gave. Sweetheart, you're going to knock the thing over. It's not very sturdy, you know. Uh, and while all this is going on, Keith is just going to chill, sitting here going, you know, I, I would nothing to do with the babies. But if they're going to play, just let them play. <laughs> It's not worth my effort to get upset about it anymore. And I'm sitting here so that I can keep an eye on them as they play. Um, just make sure that they don't get tangled up with that um, uh, with that uh, string thingy or anything. And I can also keep an eye on Nagita, you know. Uh, now, uh, I am wearing a white shirt. And uh, two of my friends commented. Uh, the the cat rescuer from out of province said, as soon as she saw the white shirt in the uh, podcast um, I did two nights ago, she knew I was in serious trouble. And then the uh, local cat rescuer uh, said uh, in a text yesterday that um, it was kind of weird to see me wearing a white shirt. And... Uh, she also said it was weird to see me with it, my usual, you know, kind of nutty professor enthusiasm, you know, so nothing. Now, today I am showing, I am revealing that I'm wearing a white t-shirt, which I wear to sleep at night. I'm also revealing that he's a, he's a nutty professor, you know, uh, you know, personal, you know, which I normally don't share with the world, but I'm wearing red pajamas. Now, the reason for this is that uh, I get them in sale and they've got some black on them and I bought them from that uh, brand has gone wild outlet, which my relatives kind of disapprove of because it's, um, I think it's very, you know, 
it's, it's not it's not a stylish place. But anyway, so I got the um, uh, the, the, the the red and black uh, PJs on on sale, and and you know, for sleeping, this is my new thing. I I don't really care what color it is because nobody sees it except the kids. Uh, the kids don't aren't too worried, you know. They know that. I am really a black cat, so it doesn't matter to them what color, you know, uh, my PJs and my um, my uh, uh, T-shirt are. Uh, uh, and I've, I've just been sure to care for you in that uh, reveal the uh, the red pajamas and white T-shirts uh, in podcast. But at this point, I mean, it's not as bad as it was the other night. But at this point, I'm like, I'm not too worried. I'm like, like it's uh, you know, if, if people think that it's kind of weird. You know, fine. You know, like, <laughs> but I, I am sharing it, and now I'm sharing it more in a in a playful spirit. Uh, and, uh, a couple of uh, nights ago, I showed the white, white T-shirt just because I really did not have the energy to. to I didn't really care. I was like, like oh, which black shirt am I going to wear now? I have to get changed. I have to go. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just and I just kind of collapsed on the sofa, and I just turned on the phone, and I'm like going. <laughs> It is what it is. But uh, today I'm like, okay, I, I could have changed into a, you know, uh, black track pants and black t-shirt, but I'm like, I'm, but let's, let, let's, let's, uh, let's wear what we're wearing. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, uh, just a few thoughts here. I'm not particularly impressed with Tylenol 3. Uh, I think I took, uh, I just took one now. And I took uh, yesterday at uh, five hour intervals, and I think I took three. You know, um, so um, sweetheart, uh, Agita, why are you getting up? You know, what's uh, you're coming here. You know, uh, you were very nicely settled. You know? So anyway, uh, but uh, she's not worried about the the baby. So let them play. No, it's fine. She's gone to the kitchen. Um, so anyway. Uh, I've, uh, and then I took another Tylenol 3 this morning. And as far as I can tell, in terms of pain relief, I think the Advil I was taking before, the 600 milligrams every six hours, was more effective. Uh, I'm still feeling quite a bit of it, You know, it's not as much as it would have been without medication, but it's um, it's still there. So I'm not particularly impressed with um uh, uh, so-called Tylenol-3 uh, codeine. And as I think, I think I said in yesterday's podcast, I, as far as I know, I really don't have experience with opiates, you know. Uh, the, uh, I was offered a line to snort of, you know, of the big opiate of H um, for five years ago, and, uh, and I turned it down. But uh, uh, somebody else I knew in that world, and this is the person who came up with the slitheries, uh, you know, dusty dumpster rodent weasels, you know. And uh, so you're knocking over the sweethearts, that the whole thing is going to collapse. Uh, but the uh, the person who came up with, uh, uh, you know, the, the language that I call uh, slitheries, uh, you know, so people who, you know, did the substances that I did, that he or she uh, kind of liked, um, uh, were, it was called dust, uh, nose dust. And lung dust, and you know, and we were dusty dumpster rodent weasels, you know, and uh, you know, and to partake of it was also the the reptilian element because it was slithering, you know. So, uh, but uh, this person and I had fairly similar tastes, I think, in in uh, in substances, and he or she uh, told me that they had tried, you know. Um, opiates, I mean the strong ones, and uh, did nothing for them. So you never know. I mean, you know, I, uh, uh, opiates may just not. Uh, you know, there's, there's another substance that I have tried, and you know, a lot of a lot of people like it, but just didn't do a thing for me. You know, <laughs> like, uh, so you never know. I, for some reason, it seems to be very specific. You know, certain stimulants that work in certain ways, you know. So, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'll take another um, uh, Tylenol 3 when I can. And if it really is not helping, I might just switch back to um, Advil. Because the Advil was working, you know, up to a point. So, and I just took my third um, antibiotic. 
you know, just waiting for that to kick in. So anyway, that's the report from now. Okay, while I'm doing this, I might as well share something else. Um, the uh, my our new preference friend, the one who worries about me, she um, uh, in yesterday's um, email. Uh, the one after she saw the one uh, I was wearing the white uh, t-shirt and she got very upset uh, uh, well not just about the white t-shirt but about uh, the fact that I had two um, uh, uh, excursions recursions in such close proximity so um, uh, uh, she was saying I know that 12 steps don't work for you but you know uh, there must be some alternative uh, rehabs you know and uh, you know uh, when this uh, this uh, this addiction uh, uh, started uh, four or five years ago, I did uh, maybe after a year I did and uh, look into I did a little research on rehabs, you know, residential rehabs, and uh, the twelve step ones. Yes, I'm pretty sure they will not they would not work for me. I would you know uh, uh, the one I told you about where you know they have the twelve step meetings and you can't wear track pants and you can't wear ripped jeans and you have to do this you know uh, Nutty professor does not do well with rules you know so I, I'm pretty sure that on the first day or second day I would have been like fuck off and left you know so um, uh, and the whole higher power and the chanting and the praying it's not my path you know so it, that wouldn't have worked there are some non 12 step programs you know and that's what my friend was asking uh, are there some alternative programs and there was one that was alternative but it was very it was what i call you know uh, rock star rehab it was it was very expensive and i won't say where it is uh, just somewhere in canada uh, uh, and it was uh, now just thinking back for some reason, I'm remembering the, the amount of $36,000, but I'm not sure if that was like for a month or two months. Um, it might have been just a month. And I think they recommended two months. So it was out of my budget anyway, you know. Uh, but I did look at their, uh, you know, they sent me some uh, some info, some links, and I looked at the, uh, the website just out of curiosity. And it was, uh, you know, uh, as I said, kind of rock star. Rich kid rehab, and it was uh, uh, it it was alternative. I mean, it was not twelve step. Uh, they did have different types of uh, therapy counseling. There was there was a psychodynamic uh, counseling available, and something about attachment therapy from early attachment issues. And they had a they had a personal trainer or personal trainers who will cater your recovery uh, exercise you know so to your particular needs you know and there was a, a michelin star chef it was a one star chef you know but then uh, for, for a rehab place I, you know a michelin chef i don't think you're going to get one with two or three stars but uh, it was a, still a one star michelin chef who will cater your meals to your uh, recovery needs, you know, so you have much salt, how much this, how much protein, and all of that stuff, and, you know, I'm just, you know, as I said to my friend, uh, can you just imagine the, uh, you know, being uh, uh, woken up at 8 o'clock in the morning, because and it's like, a, a, sir, your uh, your personal trainer is here to, you know, uh, so for you to start your exercise regime, and I would have been like, fuck off, you know, I'm sleeping, you know. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure the chef uh, would not have allowed me to um, to douse all my food in large amounts of hot sauce, you know, because you know I think that that's probably considered as addictive behavior, and uh, uh, and probably not very good for me uh, because the uh, uh, you know the hot sauces the the level that I'm at. It does actually stimulate endorphins, you know. So, um, and I'm pretty sure the, uh, the the recovery chef would not. I'm here in Agita's room with her, and she allowed me to lie on the bed next to her for a while, uh, but now she's got up. So, I guess we're going to have family time in the main space. Okay, let's let's go out, uh, Agita. Your brothers will be waiting. There they wanted to come in and join us, but I know you would have freaked. So, just, they may be at the door. Be careful. Okay. Yes, we're all out here. No, you can't go into your sister's room. 
Okay, bye for now. Hello everybody, it's me again. Uh, Baby C here. Agitha just went into her room a, little, a few minutes ago. She'd been out where, here with us all day. But, uh, you know, the uh, delivery person came to the door. So, this is day two of this, you know, return. I didn't feel like cooking and stuff. And I uh, um, talked to a, my uh, friend out of province. And uh, apparently they had uh, uh, KFC last night. And I've never been a big KFC fan, but um, I'm like, oh, I haven't had Swiss Chalet in a long time, and, you know, what a delivery. So I get a quarter chicken. Goes to show how long it's been since I've ordered Swiss Chalet, because uh, last time I think I ordered, it came in those round, kind of, you know, I think they were styrofoam or tin or something. They were, they were not very environmentally friendly containers. So this is like the cardboard one. Um, so I got the quarter chicken dinner, white meat, and I've got my own Tabasco, I got my own hot sauce, and I think I got, I, I got dessert too, a uh, lemon meringue pie. Uh, oh, and I got appetizers! You know, for a change, I got some uh, um, uh, cheese barogies. I mean, you know, so, uh, uh, this is the best that the werewolf is going to get from me now is, you know, is food. So anyway, I'm going to have some, some chicken and some uh, appetizers and just relax with the kids. So it's day two. So far, so good. Uh, bye for now. Hello, everybody. It's me, the Nutty Professor. I finished my own uh, Swiss Chalet um, uh, delivery. And then I fed uh, the babies. So when the babies is there, they just uh, finished their wet food. And the other room of the babies is there, sitting outside his sister's room, because sister is just finishing. Agita is just finishing her own uh, wet food. Uh, there's a little bit left. Yeah, so Agita is there. So that's the uh, three kids. Uh, Agita was mostly in the living area uh, during the day, sitting here or um, uh, on her blanket over there. And just a little while ago, before I... Uh, I think it was actually when I ordered my own t uh, takeout. And uh, the, the the guy came to the door, but she wanted to go into her room. So I said, fine, you've spent a lot of family time together. Uh, so she went into her room until their supper. And after I tape this and post this, I will uh, let her out of her room and we'll have some more family together this time. I was debating on whether to actually uh, post this or not. I mean, every day is going to be a bit much for my, you know, few viewers. I don't want to overtax people. I don't want to overload people. But what I'm planning on doing is I might as well, when I can, I'll post. If people want to watch, they can watch. If they want to skim, they can skim. If they just want to look at the uh, the title, they can look at the title. And I'm not going to send it, the link, to a lot of people. Uh, just the, the people who I know you know, I've, I've been following uh, closely my, my, my good friends. And I'm not going to ask everybody to actually watch all of these. You want to watch them, fine. You want to skim them, fine. You want to just look at the title, fine. So, or, you know, you don't want to look at the title, that's okay. I'm doing them really more for myself. The record is there. And it will be sort of a record of day-by-day day struggle. So it's day two now. So made day two. Made day two at home. I took my, uh, my next... A dose of antibiotic. The pain was still there, so I took another. Um, I had to take, you know, for some reason. I, I'm not. Re I didn't really like the uh, the the Tylenol three. Didn't really help much. I did take it when you know the time intervals prescribed, and then I think I took an Advil as well. But finally, just before I ate, the pain did uh, subside. I took an Advil as well, um, and now uh, pain is okay. Before I go to bed, I will probably take another, uh, I'll be due for another Tylenol 3. So, um, uh, I'm on the medications, I've been home, I've been taping, I got the takeout, and I've had some thoughts. Um, one is, I might have mentioned this in a much earlier podcast, uh, my own model, the uh, return model rather than the recovery model. So the hero or anti-hero who goes to the underworld, you know. Uh, and the world I go to, the nightlife, I mean, you know, it really is under because it's at night and, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of shady, you know. Um, and it's entering the unconscious because it is, you know, it's the Dionysian Dionysus, 
the god of intoxication, the uh, the, the kind of possession. And uh, so it is it is really the underworld. And I do go to the underworld, and then the the difficulty is coming back. And uh, that's what Campbell says is that very often the hero or anti-hero wants to stay there. You know? But there are things that he or she has to do back in, and there's knowledge that he or she has to bring back or, you know, or wants to share or this. So, and as I said so many times, I mean, you know, Odysseus came back, uh, uh, Ulysses, uh, uh, he came back for his family, you know, and I've sort of come back for my family, you know, the kids, you know. So, uh, and then there's my podcasts and, you know, there's my writing, which I would eventually like to publish with the details with the details of what the journeys are really like, the the, uh, the details that I'm hesitant to share publicly in this uh, format. So in so- someday I would like to eventually publish them, you know? So um, when the circumstances are right and uh, names and things have been changed and, and I get an editor who, I, you know, I've had a couple of editors who like my work, but it didn't work out uh, uh, once because she wanted me to take it in a, in a sort of a judgmental direction, which I didn't want to go in. And the other one it was uh, a little worried about the content, the fact that it deals with illegal substances, you know. So um, uh, uh, I do have uh, the family, and that's what you know. My my out of province friend is particularly also worried, uh, you know, being a cat rescuer, particularly worried about my kids and what may happen to them if I stay there. Or, I mean, you know, stay there means just, you know, not come back permanently in terms of, you know, the underworld, the, you know, not surviving thing, you know. <laughs> so that's, that's part of the thing, too. So, anyway, uh, I, I do want to come back. I went to, uh, you know, and I'm going to put the effort into it because I have these unfinished tasks. And... Uh, one of the things that Campbell says is that the knowledge that one gains, so when you go into, and in Jungian terms, when you confront the shadow and you go into the underworld and you see the parts of yourself that you really, really don't want to admit, you know, which I have seen, you know, uh, you know this is what I keep talking about, the werewolf. We keep talking about the werewolf as if it's a thing and uh, as if it's separate from me and my uh, uh, my other cat rescuer friend, you know, who's normally very polite, but she was like going, you know, that fucking asshole werewolf, you know, <laughs> we should, uh, you know, I've got some bite gloves that can be used on alligators. <laughs> she says, you know, if you ever want to subdue it with the bite, fucking asshole, and she's like swearing at it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, but it's really a part of me. That's the whole thing. I mean, you know, that, that whole shadow, it's me. So that's the that's the horror, as uh, Kurt said in the uh, you know um, Hearts of Darkness and then Apocalypse Now. That's really the horror, you know. Uh, so that's part of the the, the journey, the uh, uh, you know the uh, confronting of shadow and the you know all of that and id uh, Freud's uh, thing. So all of that is there, and when one returns, you know, having confronted the horror. Uh, and I think that was the last, if I'm not mistaken, that was the last line of uh, that uh, of Kurtz in uh, in uh, Hearts of Darkness, Joseph uh, Conrad. You know the the horror, the horror. You know, uh, played by Marlon Brando in um, Apocalypse Now. So um, I guess I'm bald and I'm kind of overweight. So I don't know, yeah. But anyway, so that's the whole, whole thing. And I, I I have said once that in in that framework in the Apocalypse Now movie framework. Uh, Kurtz didn't make it back. Uh, he faced the horror and then he died there, uh, in the underworld, in the jungle. Uh, whereas the other one, the Martin Sheen character, made it back to society. Changed, you know? But he made it back, you know? And, um, I had said earlier, I think in a much earlier podcast, that I want to be the Martin Sheen one. The one who comes back to society. Changed, you know? <laughs> a little cheated, you know, uh, but comes back. And uh, I still want to come back, but it's just, you know, the pull is very, very strong because it is that unspeakable, you know, unimaginable delights are there and the unspeakable horrors are also a pull, you know. So uh, anyway, um Campbell says that when 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 the so-called hero does return, uh, 
they have the uh, one of the boons, one of what one uh, gains from the underworld. What one comes back with is uh, you become, and I, you know, I hate even putting it in these terms, but the way he says it is, uh, you are the master of both worlds. So you're the master of the ordinary world. So you come back to the ordinary world and you can handle it. You don't like freak out at the ordinary world. You can, you are a master of the ordinary world, but you're also a master of the spirit. And he, yeah, again, he, you know, that's kind of Campbell's framework and I hesitate to use spirit. You know, uh, you know how I feel about the whole religion thing. So rather than uh, uh, master of the spiritual world and the, uh, uh, ordinary world. I'd like to say, you know, I've understood my own werewolf and I've kind of subdued it and I understand the inner world. Let's just say the inner world, you know, uh, uh, which links to the dream world and everything else. And, you know, I'm into dreams. So let's just say part of the, the knowledge in this return is the knowledge of the inner world and the acceptance of it and the outer world, being able to function in the outer world, to return to it and not, you know, uh, not stay in the other one and not want to keep returning to the other one. So though I'm rambling, I'm not making, I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense, but these are just some of the thoughts I've had. So anyway, I leave you with that. So I'm going to post this. Anybody who wants to, you know, wade through this shit, you can. If not, fine. Doing it more for myself. Bye for now. For myself and the kids. Bye for now.